upper end of the thoracic cage is much narrower than the lower end, as you can see. And the upper limit of the thoracic cage, which is in fact at the junction between the thorax and the neck, the cervical thoracic junction, is called the thoracic inlet in anatomical terminology. But the same thoracic inlet is referred to as the thoracic outlet by vascular surgeons and vascular radiologists. And the term thoracic outlet syndrome refers to compression of neurovascular structures at this level, at the level of the upper edge of the thoracic cage. So this thoracic inlet or thoracic outlet is the area between the two first ribs and limited anteriorly by the sternal notch. So what are the neurovascular structures that can be compressed at this level? There's an important artery that crosses above the first rib to enter the axilla. That's the subclavian artery. And in front of the subclavian artery, the upper aspect of the first rib is crossed by a large vein, the subclavian vein. So either of these structures can be compressed at the level of the first rib. But far more important than either of these two in the context of thoracic outlet syndrome is a neural structure. It's the brachial plexus, or even the lower trunk of the brachial plexus, as it arches above the first rib to enter the axilla. So these are the neurovascular structures that can be compressed or implicated in a thoracic outlet syndrome. Your anatomy matters.